Hi, my name is Jill Sykes. I'm uh, one of the coalition group for Legs Matter. And today I'm going to introduce you to Sarah. Sarah Williams is from Medi, and she's going to talk to you about skin. Over to you, Sarah. Hello. Thank you very much, Jill. So, hello, my name is Sarah Williams and I am a clinical trainer working for Medi UK. I have a previous experience of working as a tissue viability nurse, so I was really um, pleased that I had the opportunity to present this short session on the importance of skin integrity and how there are some simple techniques just to keep that skin integrity intact and how it can hopefully prevent some of the problems that you might have experienced or heard from some of our patient experiences from occurring to yourself. So um, if you would like to just uh, listen to this presentation and then we'll have a short question and answer session at the end between me and Jill for anything that you might like to ask that we've raised within this short presentation. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sarah Williams and I am a clinical trainer currently working with Medi UK. In my previous role as a tissue viability nurse, I spent every day educating individuals and healthcare practitioners about the importance of maintaining a healthy skin barrier. Therefore, I'm really delighted to be able to present this topic to you on behalf of Legs Matter and Medi UK on Love the Skin You're In. So the topic of skin is quite a big subject, but I wanted to just delve behind the problems that we might notice in our own body and just discuss what the anatomy and physiology is, what's going on underneath the skin, what to look for with regards to skin changes and which are the ones that we need to be aware of and maybe refer on for assistance. Some standard skincare advice, how we can maybe look after a skin to make it last a little bit longer and some of the prevention um, techniques that we can bring into our day to day habits. Without these pictures giving you some hints and tips, I'm sure you would not be able to remember all of the main functions of our skin. It is a wonderful organ and it's the largest organ in the body. The skin provides a protective barrier. It helps to keep good stuff in and bad stuff out. It helps to reduce the loss of moisture, keeping our body healthy. It's a really good barrier and helps to reduce the harmful effects of UV radiation. But it's also very important as a sensory organ. So it helps to enable us to touch and feel, but also it helps to detect temperature. And that can have a quite a harmful effect on those people that may suffer with neuropathy, a lack of sensation or feeling in their feet or hands. It helps us to regulate our temperature, keeping us at the optimum temperature to keep ourselves healthy. But it's also an immune organ to help detect infections and try and keep these um, pathogens at bay and to keep our body healthy. It's got a tough job. So we need to make sure that we can make its job easier by looking after it. The cross section of the skin helps to indicate the different layers underneath. Your skin changes with age, it becomes thinner, loses fat and no longer looks as plump and as smooth as it once did. Your veins and bones may be seen more easily. Scratches, cuts or bumps may take longer to heal. Possibly years of sun tanning or being out in the sunlight for long periods of time may lead to wrinkles, dryness, age spots and even cancer. But there are things that you can do to protect your skin or to make it feel and look better. Many older people suffer from dry spots on their skin, often on their lower legs, elbows and lower arms. And these dry skin patches may feel rough and scaly. Other things that may cause dry skin are not drinking enough fluids, spending too much time in the sun or sunbathing, being in an environment with very dry air. Smoking and stress have a detrimental effect on our skin, but also as we age, we lose sweat and oil glands which act as a protective layer on our skin. And this is common with age. Other issues that may affect dry skin may be medical conditions such as diabetes or kidney disease. And something simple just as using too much soap 
or strong antiperspirants or perfume can make our skin worse. Some medicines can also make our skin itchy and because older, pin, older people have thinner skin, scratching can easily cause bleeding that could then lead to the possibility of a skin infection. Always ask for advice if your skin is very dry and itchy. This picture demonstrates that unhealthy skin is much more likely to enable irritants to enter and cause problems as well as facilitate heat and fluid loss. Therefore, a good skincare regime can help to reduce this effect and prevent problems from occurring. The acid mantle is a very fine, slightly acidic film on the surface of human skin, acting as a barrier to bacteria, viruses and other potential harm that might penetrate the skin. Sebum is an oily secretion made by the sebaceous gland and when mixed with sweat, it becomes our acid mantle. However, if you bathe too often or regularly use strong perfume pro products, these can affect the skin's ability to protect itself. You can help to repair your skin's barrier by simplifying your skincare regime using products with a suitable pH and moisturisers that can help to plump up the skin, making it more robust. Moisturisers with a greasy um, effect can also help to keep the skin barrier intact and keeping the moisture sealed in. Changes in the skin may occur due to problems underneath in the circulation that we cannot see. Venous disease is a problem caused by the valves in the veins not pushing blood through the chambers effectively back up to the heart. When these valves do not close together tightly and push the blood effectively back up into the next chamber, they push some of the blood upwards in the correct direction, but they also allow some blood to fall back down by the force of gravity. This enables the veins to swell and stretch, exacerbating the problem even further. As we walk, we enable the calf pump muscle to contract against the venous return and encourage blood flow back to the heart, which is why movement is recommended on a regular basis. It is well known that a patient will only go to the healthcare practitioner when they've had a wound on their leg for some time and it is not healing as anticipated. The reason why the wound is not healing is often because they have a vein that is unhealthy and not working as it should be. These pictures help to demonstrate how an unhealthy vein will have some blood that will flow back up the leg into the circulatory system, but how some of that blood will fall back down by the force of gravity because the valves in the veins are not working quite so effectively. The picture in the middle shows how a healthy vein will be working, such as how they used to do when we were 21. And the picture on the far right demonstrates how the compression therapy helps to provide that artificial support to improve that circulatory return, to improve the blood flow and prevent some of those skin changes from reoccurring, but also to help heal that wound that may have appeared. If you have a buildup of blood cells that become sticky, they can form a blockage such as a thrombosis. If this happens within your deep veins, you may develop a deep vein thrombosis. Issues such as an increase of age, sitting for long periods of time, if you've had a recent injury or surgery, smoking or pregnancy are all aspects that may increase your vulnerability to a deep vein thrombosis. The signs may be that you have a new pain around a swelling area. You might have developed some new heavy aching feeling in your lower limbs. You might actually have a warm skin around a swollen area of the clot, or you might have a reddened area around the swelling. Commonplace is maybe behind the knee in the, in the rear of your calf. If you have any of these signs or symptoms, these need to be investigated as a medical emergency. 
Another system underneath the skin is the lymphatic system. It's less well known, but it is actually bigger than the vascular system. It's another network of tissues, vessels and organs that work together to move a colourless watery fluid called the lymph back into your circulatory system. If this becomes damaged, the fluid levels in your body are out of kilter and they may need additional treatment or support to improve your skin condition. Peripheral arterial disease, also known as PAD, is a common condition where a buildup of fatty deposits in the arteries restricts blood supply to the leg muscles. It's also known as peripheral vascular disease, PVD. Many people with this condition have no symptoms. However, some may develop a painful ache in their legs when they walk, which usually disappears after a few minutes rest. The medical term for this is intermittent claudication. The pain can range from mild to severe and usually goes away after a few minutes when you rest your legs. Both legs are often affected at the same time, although the pain may be worse in one leg rather than another. Other symptoms that you may have peripheral arterial disease can include hair loss on your legs and feet, numbness or weakness in your legs. Maybe you have brittle or slow growing toenails. You may have open sores or ulcers on your feet and legs which do not heal. If the skin on your legs is changing colour such as turning pale or blue, this is another indicator, or you may have shiny skin. In men, erectile dysfunction can be an indicator or the muscles in the legs are shrinking and wasting. The symptoms of peripheral arterial disease often develop slowly over time. And if your symptoms develop quickly or get suddenly worse, it could be a sign of a serious problem that you need immediate treatment. As the skin ages, it loses its elasticity, becoming thinner and therefore more fragile. If our skin becomes flaky and dry and less hydrated, it has less strength to fight back external factors. Therefore, we need to take more care of the skin we're in. So over the next couple of slides, I'm going to share some photographs to demonstrate some terminology that you might hear, but also to understand what you should be doing if you've got some of these issues yourself. So skin swelling or edema in the lower limb is stretching the skin. It can happen in the ankles, feet and legs and is often caused by a buildup of fluid in these areas. Edema is usually caused by standing or sitting in the same position for too long. Swollen feet or legs are your body's way of saying that something isn't right. It may have been because of an injury or it could be just simply a sign that your veins or your lymphatic system aren't working as well as they should. If you're experiencing these issues, you should be seeking some medical assistance. If you have noticed some reddish brown staining on your lower legs, this could be caused by problems with the veins in your legs. And this is known as venous hypertension or insufficiency. It just happens when a high pressure in your vein is pushing the blood into the skin. The tissue gets stained by the red blood cells in the skin tissue. When the skin is stained like this, it can become fragile and it may break down if it's knocked and then it may fail to heal as you would usually expect to. Compression support in the form of a sock or a wrap can help to reduce edema and can provide support for the venous return, improving your circulation and reducing some of those venous disease signs and symptoms. Dry scaly skin plaques, otherwise known as hyperkeratosis, is an overproduction of skin cells layered on top of one another. They may feel as areas of rough or patchy skin that feels different from the rest of your skin. They may look a bit discoloured in appearance. If left untreated, they can harbour bacteria and if you pick or break the surface of the skin, this could lead to the opportunity of a skin infection. 
Treatment is recommended to cleanse and apply regular moisturisers to help soften the skin and lift some of those stubborn plaques. A method such as mechanical debridement with a polishing motion using a pre-moistened wound debridement cloth that I will talk about later in one of my videos is something that healthcare practitioners may use to facilitate the removal of these dry plaques. Varicose eczema is itchy skin caused by damaged venous circulation. On lighter skin, it can look red or brown. On darker skin, it can look dark brown, purple or grey and difficult to see. But the skin may be itchy and swollen, dry and flaky or scaly and crusty. If untreated, a wound may develop in the damaged area of the skin, causing longer term problems. Some measures to improve or reduce the risk of this occurring is to help improve your circulation by keeping active, applying moisturisers to keep your skin healthy, and there may be times when you need to use topical corticosteroids to help reduce the inflammation and itch in the skin. Compression garments can help to improve the circulation and prevent some of these symptoms from returning. Although most cuts and grazes will heal by themselves in just a few days, some can take up to 10 days and if it's not healing after two weeks, it's recommended that you should be contacting a healthcare professional to have a look and offer advice. If your wound is painful though, painkillers such as paracetamol or ibuprofen may help. Thorough cleaning and a plaster or dressing is all that is needed for most cuts and grazes, although as we know, with ageing, healing may take a little bit longer and it may be complicated by other medical issues. Cellulitis is a skin infection. It may make your skin feel painful, hot and swollen. The area usually looks red, but this may be less obvious on brown or black skin. Your skin may also be blistered and you may suffer with swollen, painful glands. You can experience cellulitis on any part of the body. Good advice is to draw a line uppermost of where the reddened skin appears and then ensure after you have commenced your treatment, which is usually a weeks of antibiotics, that this reddened area does not extend far above this line. If the reddened skin continues to move up the limb, it is advisable to go back to your GP for further advice. You can speed up your recovery by taking the full course of antibiotics and maybe additional paracetamol or ibuprofen for the pain. Raising the affected part of the body on a pillow or chair when you're sitting or lying down may aid to reduce the swelling. Also, regularly move the joint near the affected part of the body to ensure that you reduce it from feeling stiff. Drinking plenty of fluids to avoid dehydration is recommended. And you may want to reduce the level of compression that you wear during this episode of illness. You can reduce the chances of repeated cellulitis by reducing the risk of breaking your skin. Maintain healthy skin by cleaning and moisturising regularly, applying appropriate um, wound care for any cuts or grazes, making sure that you wear appropriate clothing and footwear when outside and wearing gloves if you work outside regularly. Ensure you wear your compression garments daily. Fungal infection or athlete's foot is a common fungal infection that affects the feet. You can usually treat it with creams, sprays or powders from a pharmacy, but it can keep coming back. One of the main symptoms of athlete's foot is itchy white patches between your toes. And if it's not treated, the infection can spread to your toenails and cause a fungal nail infection. Advice for treatment and prevention is to make sure that you dry your feet after washing them, particularly between your toes, and dab them rather than rubbing them. Use a separate towel for your feet and wash it regularly. Take your shoes off when you get home and wear clean socks every day. Advice is not to scratch the affected skin as this could spread it to other parts of the body. 
try not to walk around barefoot, wear flip-flops in places like changing rooms and showers. It is not advisable to share towels, socks or shoes with other people. And try not to wear the same pair of shoes for more than two days in a row. And avoid wearing shoes that may make your feet feel hot and sweaty. Medi can provide you with something to help you with your lower limb skincare regime. We have something called a UCS debridement cloth and recently we have added the UCS debridement glove to the market. They are pre-moistened and ready to use. They're pre-moistened with three special ingredients. They have aloe vera, which is known to soothe irritated and inflamed skin, which can make it feel really cool and soothing afterwards. It has allantoin, which is known to have this softening effect on the skin that helps to lift some of those dry, sub stubborn skin plaques that can remain on the lower limb after just using soap and water. We also know that if we don't lift some of those skin plaques that remain on the skin, they could harbour bacteria which could cause problems in the future. The third ingredient is called a surfactant. The surfactant is a clean cleaning agent that helps to lift remaining bacteria that might sit as a re residue on the surface of the skin, or it may actually enable a wound to remain static and not go on to heal. It helps to lift some of that remaining bacteria or um, tissue debris and skin plaques and capture it like a magnet in the loop technology of the cloth and wick it away from the surface of the skin, leaving it clean and fresh, ready for your moisturiser to go on and keep your skin healthy or for the wound care product to go on to the surface of the wound. They're really easy to open and you can use both sides of the cloth and the large surface area make them really cost effective. The plus side for the healthcare practitioner is the fact that it means they don't have to use heavy buckets of water to wash a lower limb. They mean that they're small, they're really useful for you to use in the clinic environment, but also they're really useful to share with your patients so that they can become involved in their own skincare and wound care regime. The next slide is going to show you a video of how me, Sarah Williams, the clinical trainer, is actually demonstrating how this can have a real impact in the home with a patient and how they can become more patient centred with regards to their treatment plan. John is receiving a home visit from the community nurse and a Medi UK clinical trainer. Hi John. Sarah from the Medi clinical team is visiting with me today to suggest some ways we can manage that leg wound of yours that still hasn't healed. Okay. That's great. I really want to find a solution. Did you know that 78% of wounds have a biofilm? That is going to stop it from healing regardless of what you cover the wound with. One way of removing it is to use the UCS debridement cloth. Is it something John could easily use himself? Oh yes. You simply open one of the individual sterile packs and you'll find the cloth is pre-moistened and ready to use on the wound. It has a special solution that deep cleans, softens hard skin, adds moisture to the wound bed and surrounding skin, plus soft loop technology to catch loose particles. A top tip is to wrap a section of the cloth around your gloved finger and use a polishing motion in the wound bed and around the wound edge. Once that section is soiled, adjust the cloth to a fresh section and continue as needed. Both sides of the cloth can be used, which means just one cloth can cleanse a whole limb. You don't need to wash it off or dry your leg, just let the solution continue to do its work. This helps remove the biofilm and will encourage your wound to heal. That sounds like something I could do. Yes, many patients use this product themselves as part of their self-caring routine for their wound. Although John's is a static wound, UCS debridement cloth can be used on a wide range of wounds. Here are some case studies showing improvements to static, sluffy and in-between toe wounds. For much larger wounds, we also have the UCS debridement glove. This has all the same benefits as the cloth and is much larger so you can cover a large area of a wound, peri-wound and surrounding skin. 
So what do you think, John? That's really good. I can see how I could do that myself. That's great, John. Do you have any questions or anything else I could help you with? UCS is a pre-moistened single-use cloth or glove for effective wound debridement and cleaning of the surrounding leg area. Available on prescription, it is able to support and improve a patient's self-care and treatment regime. So we now know a little bit more about the anatomy and physiology of what's going on underneath our skin and maybe how sometimes some skin changes externally may be demonstrating some problems going on underneath. So Legs Matter are recommending on a regular basis we should be thinking one, two, three. We should be checking our skin for colour changes, anything that may be different from what was normal before. We should be checking the shape of our leg. Are we having any increase in swelling on our ankle and lower limb? And this needs to be supported. We need to feel our skin. Are there any new swellings? Are there any increase in heat or um, hardening on our skin? And this, we also know, can be a problem with regards to the circulatory system underneath. And we need to seek help to make sure that we can keep our skin healthy and reduce that barrier from becoming broken down and penetrated causing further problems. So we know good advice is to make sure that we check our skin regularly, but some parts of the body may be easier to check than others. So um, our feet, it may be harder to check whether there's any new redness or swelling there. So you might need to use either the assistance of family members or carers, or maybe some well positioned mirrors. Um, it's particularly important for those people that might have lost the feeling or sensation in their feet or parts of their body to make sure that as those warning signs aren't going to alarm them if there's a break in the skin or it's becoming more sore and vulnerable that they are alerted to it at the earliest opportunity. One of the stories that I remember from my nursing career was um, a carer informed me that her father-in-law had lost his remote control and he'd look for it everywhere and he couldn't find it. He lived on his own, so his son went over to see him one day after work to try and locate it and track it down for him. Um, and he was able to find it eventually in the slipper of the slipper his dad was wearing. And if you think about the size of a remote control, it's quite large. You would think that you would notice or feel that pressure within your shoe. And I think that really made me aware of the numbness that can be experienced in parts of the body that you can be completely oblivious with regards to the amount of a hard pressure on your skin and how much damage that could cause for somebody over a long period of time. It made me think it was a little bit of a humorous story because you're thinking if you'd been walking on that for a regular basis it must have really freaked him out with regards to who was turning the channel over on his tv but very grateful for the fact that maybe it was um, located early enough so that he could take control again so i think uh, the moral of this is know what's normal for you and if maybe your skin does need a little bit of assistance make sure that you add that into your daily routine So good advice is to keep our skin clean, make sure that we check between skin folds and we make sure that we dry well. When we're drying our skin, it's not to rub it too vigorously as this can irritate the skin and make it feel itchy, but we make sure that we dry it in the direction of the hair follicles to make sure that we keep the skin healthy. We make sure that once we've dried our skin that we apply liberal amounts of moisturiser and allow it to sink into the skin before applying clothes. It's very um, well known that many people do not apply sufficient moisturiser to hydrate their ageing skin sufficiently. We might need different levels of hydration from emollients on different parts of our body. Some are greasier than others, and therefore we need to make sure that when we're using greasier moisturisers, that we do maybe take some additional care not to slip when using them. 
Some emollient skin products are widely prescribed and dispensed for various skin conditions such as psoriasis, eczema, bed sores and ulcers and they are safe to use but they can soak into clothing, dressing and bedding and if you are unaware they can leave a flammable residue. So it's just really to let people know that if these garments are exposed to, to a naked flame or a heat source such as a cigarette or lighter or gas cooker, heater or fire, these saturated fabrics with these moisturisers may be at risk of catching fire. So it's the residual of the moisturiser on the garment or the cloth could spread rap rapidly causing a serious injury so it's just to be alerted to that risk. So it's recommended to feel our skin so that we know when something different happens from what is normal for us. We know it's normal to feel an occasional cramp when we're walking. However, if it becomes a more regular sign, it may indicate that we've got a problem with our circulation not working effectively, such as um, peripheral arterial disease, which may require further investigations. If you have tired, aching, throbbing legs, this may also be a sign that your circulation could do with a little bit of extra support, maybe in the form of a compression garment. We're just advising you not to ignore any of these changes in your skin and seek medical advice when it's appropriate. We want to encourage education around how we can keep our skin healthy. Education around common skin changes, what they may mean and what action to take is all part and parcel of this campaign. We want to make sure that you have the resources to help keep your own skin healthy and intact. Eating a healthy diet helps to provide nutrition to nourish your skin and fuel it with the energy to keep the barrier intact. If you're keeping active, the regular movement is good for your whole body and it helps to reduce direct pressure on specific parts of the body. Smoking isn't good for your circulation and it can age your skin and we all want to look as young as possible. Emotions, if you're feeling stressed out or anxious, this can also lead to maybe an itchy skin. The itch due to anxiety can cause serious skin problems but also if you scratch too much or too vigorously you can break the skin which causes further problems further down the line. It's important to have a good regular skincare regime to maintain healthy, healthy skin condition and it's also important to be aware of pain and monitor pain and if it alters speak to a healthcare practitioner to help with some support. Psoriasis or itching refers to a sensation of the skin which causes a desire to scratch. Itching is a normal body response to protect us from harmful external substances or things such as insect bites. However, itch is perhaps the commonest presenting symptom of all skin disorders and in any two week period, eight to nine percent of the population will suffer with significant pruritus. This can either be a localised to one area or generalised all over the skin. General pruritus without a rash, which is especially common in people over the age of 65, is mainly caused by dry skin, medication or a medical condition. Removing the causative factor and then treating the dry skin with a daily regime is often an ongoing and long-term treatment plan. Moisturisers or emollients should be applied several times a day. However, the drier the skin, the more increased frequency should the moisturiser be applied. There are many different types of moisturiser and they vary in the degree of greasiness. The importance is really to choose one that you like to use. However, sometimes people may wear, may wear a greasier product overnight and a lighter one during the day, as the emollient or moisturiser may transfer to your clothing. It's important just to note that aqueous cream is a commonly used moisturiser or soap substitute on the market. 
It was originally designed to just be used as a soap substitute. However, today it is often used as a moisturiser, but it can irritate the skin and in some people it can make itching worse. Emollients or moisturisers are a substance which smooths and softens the skin, whose main action is to occlude the skin surface, encourage buildup of water, and then improve the barrier function of the skin against external forces. Formulations of emollients range from ointments, creams, gels and lotions with the highest oil content in the ointments and the lowest in lotions. Creams, gels and lotions are a combination of oil and water in differing concentration and require added stabilisers and preservatives. Emollients cannot be overused and should be used frequently on dry skin. They should be smoothed on in the direction of hair growth to minimise the risk of folliculitis. They should not be rubbed in but allowed to absorb over time. The emollient of choice is very individual. In practice, an ointment will give longer hydration but may get embedded into your clothing. Topical corticosteroids are indicated for inflammatory skin conditions, which include eczema, associated with venous hypertension. They are contraindicated in untreated bacterial, viral or fungal infection, acne or a sensitivity to an ingredient. In the UK, there are four classifications of strength from mild through to very potent. With prolonged use, there is a risk of irreversible skin thinning, which has provided a negative press of using such products in the past. However, following recommendations of daily use and then evaluating over short periods of time to see the um, improvement within the skin is recommended. A fingertip unit was also devised to identify safe daily amounts of topical corticosteroid application and this can be helpful for healthcare practitioners as well as patients to identify the appropriate amount to apply. In practice this is enough to cover the inflamed area but with a thin but glistening layer. Currently, there's no strong evidence to support the order of application of topical corticosteroid or emollient. They shouldn't be applied together though, as this can avoid diluting the topical steroid or inadvertently transferring to an unaffected area. So the intention of a good skincare regime should include all the following. We want to cleanse the skin. We want to make sure that we're using appropriate products that won't irritate our skin and cause an itch. That we dry the skin without rubbing it vigorously. And we want to make sure that we get in between those skin creases. We want to then make sure that we rehydrate our skin with a moisturiser of our choice that will help to plump up the skin and improve the skin barrier against external forces. By following these actions, hopefully it will reduce the opportunity of inflammation on the skin and help to lift some of those stubborn scaly skin plaques that might form unless if they are otherwise left untreated. And all of these actions will hopefully prevent any skin infection in the future from occurring. However, if you are unfortunate enough to develop a wound on your lower leg, you can have the reassurance that there are new regular pathways out there to treat a lower limb. The National Wound Care Strategy has recently introduced recommendations for clinical care as they wanted to improve the care of all wounds. They were aware that there is an unwarranted variation in the UK of wound care services. They wanted to provide an opportunity to improve healing rates and reduce patient suffering. They also wanted to make sure that there was a focus on reducing inappropriate and ineffective treatments and also reducing the amount of clinical time spent on wound care. You can see here that they have highlighted that there are certain red flags that need to be treated first prior to onward overall assessment of the patient. 
wounds on the lower leg have the biggest proportion of leg ulceration and is due to venous insufficiency. However, there is robust evidence to support the use of compression therapy to promote the healing of venous leg ulcers. Prior to this treatment being provided, it is advisable that um, several aspects of a patient assessment will be undertaken, such as reviewing your medical conditions, how long you have had the wound, what treatment you have experienced, and also an assessment of your arterial circulation. Following terminology used within the National Wound Care Strategy Programme, we talk about using strong compression to heal a wound on the lower leg. We know from robust evidence that a venous leg ulcer will respond well to compression therapy and the Medi Leg Ulcer Kit provides the appropriate level of compression to help heal a wound in two layers to ease application. We know that not one garment will suit everybody, so an alternative to provide strong compression can also be found in our Juxta range garments that can vary from 20 to 50 millimetres of mercury of support to provide the appropriate level of compression following a holistic assessment by a healthcare practitioner. Compression therapy helps to support the venous circulatory system to prevent skin changes from worsening and also hopefully prevent wounds from reoccurring in the future. Compression options come in many different styles colours to suit your individual requirements. These garments enable you to be able to perform your own skincare and wear your own shoes, which is really important to re keep your independence. We could always do with a little extra help every now and again. And many have thought about this extra assistance with some of our applicator aids. The Medi Butler Export is really useful with longer handles, making applying a compression garment much easier. It could be especially beneficial for taller people or for those people that may struggle to touch their toes. The compression sock is simply pulled over the inner aspect of the frame, allowing the user to slip their foot easily into the garment. The Medi 2-in-1 is a donning and doffing aid in one easy solution. It assists effortless application and removal of a compression garment, whether it is either an open toe or closed toe garment. The slider sock is foldable fabric, it makes it especially useful when traveling as is small and lightweight to add into your luggage. We have some user-friendly videos to enable education with either of these products and they are available from our website. We also are sharing a simple to follow video for those people that are able to put on their compression garments independently, but might benefit from some top tips. I thought I would highlight that it's important to always follow the care instructions per manufacturer of your individual compression garment. However, all medi hosiery can be washed in the washing machine. We just advise not to use fabric conditioners. This is because the Medivin range offers some unique features that may be reduced or diminished by adding fabric conditioner to your wash. We can offer Climber Comfort that offers maximum comfort during the summer by wicking away moisture from the surface of the skin, enabling you to feel nice and cool. It also enables that breathable fabric to allow you to feel warm in winter. The Climber Fresh feature monitors odour control and the unique spinning technique guarantees this effect even after daily washing. Regular washing of your garment helps to restore the fabric and provide the optimum therapy for your legs on a daily basis. Also, just to highlight, none of our compression garments have got any latex, so you have that reassurance of that guaranteed hypoallergenic and latex-free reassurance for any of our products. Your skin is a good indicator of your leg and foot health. Keeping your skin in good condition can help to soothe and prevent some leg issues from occurring. Daily cleansing and moisturising your legs with unscented emollients 
helps you to check for any breaks, cracks or new swellings. If you do have any broken areas that are not healing or you notice any changes in colour or texture of your skin, we advise that you contact your local healthcare services. Prevention is always better than cure and we hope you find comfort in your compression garments. Sarah, thank you very much for that presentation. That was very inspiring and a really good revision, especially for me as a podiatrist, um, on looking after skin more generally. Uh, that was fantastic, thank you. It was interesting to see um, the different aids to putting on the compression hosiery, really, because I know for my patients, particularly the elderly category that live on their own, it's very difficult for them, isn't it, to to uh, apply and put these stockings on and off really without having carers coming in especially to do that that role yeah i think sometimes as healthcare practitioners we get so focused on trying to find the product we then forget to check to see whether a patient can actually put it on or take it off but also i think as a patient's been wearing it for a little time it may be that their mobility their dexterity changes so it's good to just always keep checking in with them or let them know if in the future they have any problems that they can come back to you and we can provide them with some um, assistance with regards to some ideas and techniques really yeah i think similarly as well like you mentioned the mirror um it's also important for us as podiatrists to get patients to check underneath the feet and and the heels and and sometimes we just take it for granted that they can they can see underneath the feet and particularly you know these days just a compact mirror for any even just the carers as well to get down there and look without having to get on your hands and knees and, and double bend to see what's underneath there is, is a great resource to have exactly yes i think um taking photographs of um, heel wounds is probably very challenging I'm sure you're very good at that Jill but uh... yeah sometimes yeah I try not to get myself in these photos <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we've I've got um, a couple of um, chats going on and and so let's just see what what's come through I think um, Leanne has, has posed the first um, question probably Sarah if you treat patients with leg ulceration should we be cleansing every dressing change well, obviously, I am no longer working directly in the wound care um, field myself, so I would obviously be going back to the current tissue viabilities to guide us on that. But I think probably um, a common sense approach from my point of view would be if the wound is continuing to heal. Um, as anticipated, then is it necessary to cleanse it every time? Um, from our perspective with regards to using the UCS cloth, it's um, about addressing those really those um, wounds that maybe has got the debris that you can visibly see, but also about maybe those wounds that aren't healing as anticipated because they can have this bacteria buildup that isn't visible to the naked eye, but we know as healthcare practitioners can be a reason why they can stall. So um, although you might not visit be able to see that there's a problem the fact that it's not progressing that's when something such as the wound debridement cloth can really come into its own would you agree with that i think so yeah and and sometimes you we, we don't want to be disturbing the the healing tissue yeah. the epithelial cells either when yeah. the wound is doing so well and then we just wipe across the top and disturb everything that's good that's going on so it's looking also to see if there's any signs of clinical infection as well which you mentioned earlier um, so yeah, I, I think assessing each wound at every single treatment is is worth worth doing. Yeah. Um, the next question has come and um, saying, "Hi, my mum has a buildup of plaque on her skin of the lower legs. Uh, a healthcare nurse washes and moisturises her legs, but does not remove this buildup of skin. If I were to do this for her, would this be a good idea?" And she's currently training as a, a foot health care practitioner. So, um, yeah, I think anybody that's prepared to assist with regards to undertaking skin care, if they're elderly relatives aren't able to do it themselves, but if they're noticing that maybe there's a residue that's being left behind. So although um, 
they, somebody might be washing legs already at the moment, but they're having this buildup of plaque. It may be that soap and water alone isn't enough. And that's when you might need to start thinking of adding something else into that um, skincare regime to help build, to lift that, those scaly skin plaques. But then once you've done it, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to do it all the time. It may be that um, you just need to then implement an appropriate emollient moisturizer mm -hmm. and frequency that helps to keep that at bay as I say there's no sort of strict guidance it's everybody's different um, you know if um, people have bandages or hosiery it may be that they um, develop these um, scaly skin plaques more frequently because they're not taking their garments off or the bandages off so it's about looking at everybody individually and just sort of tweaking their current routine if it's not working for them to add something else in to help maintain good skin integrity. The challenge with regards to trying to lift those scaly skin plaques, if you're not using something to help moisten uh, and lift them gently, is that if uh, you might cause them to bleed and that's when you could sort of like cause the risk of um, maybe a skin infection. So it's, it's doing it with the appropriate tools really, isn't it? No, it's very tempting, isn't it? Not to start to pick. Really. Yes, yes, very true, yes. Um, uh, the next questions come from um, Christy. Um, this says, uh, are Medi now selling the flat knit stockings privately, e.g. Medivin, Mondi, made to measure? Uh, I have a measurement uh, form from a lymphedema service. Also, do you sell cotton flat knit stockings? Okay, so um, our made to measure are provided with the input of a healthcare practitioner. So um, it's about making sure that you've been measured with a healthcare practitioner, first of all. So that's it, it's because it would be very difficult to take your own measurements with regards to the additional ones and to make sure that you've got the right fabric and garment, etc. Um, we don't sell cotton flat knit stockings. Our, um, our hose repot has polyamide and elastine in them to provide that robust support that patients need with regards to those lymphedema limbs to make sure that we improve that circulation without digging in at maybe the skin creases, et cetera. Excellent. Just scroll down, see if there are any. Um, Leanne, like Leanne's put, sometimes patient reports itchy skin, especially on the top of the foot and in between the toes. Is there anything that we can help do to help the itching? And I know we did touch on athlete's foot, didn't we, earlier, and I'm doing a presentation on Friday specifically on that. But um, I think there are there are lots of different diagnoses for itching skin, and, and like you say, especially on the top of the foot. Could it be that we're maybe irritable to some of the content in the stocking, Sarah? Um, I think with regards to... Um, depending on where the products are coming from. I mean, I know from our own particular company, we have Otex uh, reassurance. So we've got that dermatological um, reassurance. Um, we've also um, been tested from a, a dermatological um, point of view to make sure that they are going to really give the reassurance to patients that may suffer with skin sensitivity. So they have been rigorously tested with regards to that. Um, some patients may um, suffer with uh, maybe um, a reaction to emollients and they think that maybe it might be the stockings. Um, it may be that they've got uh, another skin condition that coincides with wearing their hosiery. Um, but I think that with regards to if they wash and use the um, care instructions appropriately, for the majority of patients, it's very unlikely that they will have a reaction to our particular brand of hosiery. We do um, have some special features such as climber comfort within our Mediven range, which means that it allows the moisture to wick away from the surface of the skin. So it enables the skin to feel nice and, and fresh. So it means that if you want to feel nice and cool in summer, it allows you to do so and also warmer in winter. But it also has the um, Climber Fresh, which has this opportunity to have an antibacterial weave, which just helps to, to leave those feet smelling a little bit fresher as well so those help to maintain that really healthy um, skin integrity that helps to minimize maybe some skin problems that other people may experience but I think with regards to the compression and skin condition it's about the whole package together good skin care 
prior to putting on your compression can hopefully reduce some of those skin irritations that people have um, experienced in the past. I think that the two can join together can hopefully minimise people having skin reactions. I think as well on that note, Sarah, um, as a podiatrist, I generally find it's a good idea for getting irritants on the skin around toenails especially the big toenail, we can we yeah. compress full toed compression hosiery, but we can get what we call a paronychia, which is an inflammation of the skin down the sulcus of the nail. And that can lead to all sorts of problems and infections. So I, I would try not to contact the open toe version of that compression stocking. Um, mm -hmm. It just means that the toe area is then released around the nail beds to stop that, that, that sideward pressure and pressing onto the skin. Now, let me just see if there's any other questions down there. Um, <laughs> I have to wear stockings all day. When is the best time for me to apply my cream? First thing when I'm about to put my stockings on or remove them when getting into bed? So um, with regards to daily routine of putting on um, compression, in an ideal world, if we're fit and healthy and we can take our socks off ourselves or we're using an applicator aid, then um, it would be advisable maybe to be taking our hosiery off before we go to bed at night time and then applying a suitable emollient then. Um, as we know with regards to the different levels of oil within some of the emollients, you might feel more comfortable putting um, a greasier product on your legs if you suffer with dry itchy skin at night time because we're not worried about maybe some of that greasiness transferring to some of our, our, um, our wardrobe, our, our clothes. Um, and then that gives overnight the best opportunity for those moisturizers to really sink into the skin and have that added benefit and then when you get up in the morning if you've been in bed overnight your skin should be rested your legs should be sort of um, less swollen and then it's much yeah. easier to put your um, compression hosiery on in the morning so that's the ideal opportunity or routine that we would advocate if possible but we know that we don't live in a perfect world but that's <laughs> a good routine to get into if possible yeah. Sarah, that was fantastic. Thank you very much. You've answered a lot of really good questions and questions that I wanted to ask as well, really. And I know that you, your company, you are your, your email address is there. So if there's any questions anybody wants to ask or any advice in the future of any individual particular patients, because we know everyone's so different, um, that you're, you're there to help. I'd like to thank you very much on the half of Leg Matter for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jill, and thank you, Legs Matter, for inviting Medi UK to come and present. We've really enjoyed the opportunity, so thank you very much. Yeah.